My name is Peter Downs and uh, I live here at Itteringham Mill uh, in North Norfolk on the River Bure. I moved here with my wife Liz uh, to escape London really. The mill itself uh, was originally built in 1778 or thereabouts. Uh, it became uh, derelict in the 30s, stopped operating as a mill in the early 30s, uh, and was renovated as a gentleman's residence. We moved here in 2004 and very quickly decided that we wanted to use the river as a power source uh, as it had been used in the, in, its, in the mill's past. The hydro turbine that we've installed is a siphonic uh, device uh, which generates electricity by passing water across a, a veined propeller which then, then drives a generator. Theoretically we work for 90% of the year. Obviously the extent to which it works efficiently depends on a whole number of things that are out of our control. These include rainfall. Uh, the river itself is spring fed so it generally very rarely falls below a certain volume. So rainfall is one thing or lack of rainfall is another. Uh, the other things that affect the output of the turbine, uh, it is seasonal to some extent. We switch it off during uh, autumn or well, six weeks in autumn because there are too many leaves in the river that clog the weed screen. But the other things are that even in the summer we get quite a lot of weed growth and reeds growing in the river which affects its characteristics of flow and that can reduce the output as well. But generally speaking we can expect to be producing electricity of some sort, not necessarily maximum output which is four and a half to five kilowatts, but certainly two to three kilowatts, uh, kilowatt hours. Um, pretty well most of the year. That was the first of our, of our renewable energy um, projects uh, and it was Derwent Hydro who seeded the idea of using the electricity that we produce to run a heat pump to also take heat out of the river for heating the house. We're standing in the, uh, on the main mill race part of the river uh, which leads up to the house and goes underneath the house. And it's in this part of the river where we've installed the heat exchange loops that, uh, that feed our heat pump with, uh, with heat from the river. Uh, they're essentially eight loops, each about 100 metres long, and they're embedded in the silt. So it's a, a classic indirect um, heat pump system. So uh, after a number of uh, attempts at fiddling with the various components and changing the various components, we decided that it would be much easier just to put heat exchange loops in the river. Uh, it works quite well now that it's been installed and the various flows and returns uh, pipework have been clipped to the walls so that they don't knock against the walls in times of flood and, and cause damage to the pipework essentially. In conjunction with the underfloor heating and the heat pump we also decided early on that we would put in some solar thermal panels mainly because we thought that as our greatest demand for hot water is in the summer season uh, it would be a, a no-brainer to just put in solar thermal panels. In fact it hasn't worked so well for us because most of our demand for hot water is in the morning uh, and of course we have to ensure that we have sufficient hot water for all our guests first thing in the morning. Um, the rainwater recycling system uh, basically is a computerised system that pumps water from that system up to a holding tank in the attic uh, and it's basically used currently for uh, flushing toilets really. Uh, one of the early things that we did uh, to improve the thermal efficiency of the building was to replace most of the windows on the front and side elevations of the house. These were Georgian style sliding sash windows that were installed in 1938 and were very rattly and very drafty. And we decided that we would uh, replace those with similar um, sliding sash windows. They're double glazed, argon filled, uh, and they come from Finland. The reason we did all that was we wanted to maintain the, 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 the look of the building. The rear elevation though is completely different and we wanted to have big windows with lots of uh, natural light. These again are aluminium framed, um, insulated so there's no thermal bridging going on in the framework, argon filled, large gapped windows, 
uh, highly efficient. Uh, the mill is in a fantastic location and previously with the small scale windows that it had you could never actually benefit from the fantastic location that it was in. The other things that we've done to improve the thermal efficiency of the building is obviously to when we put in the underfloor heating, certainly on the ground floor, we took all the floor up and we put in quite a lot of rigid foam insulation there to prevent the loss of heat downwards through the building. The attic has been uh, is re insulated with lambswool insulation. Uh, all the new parts of the building have been uh, obviously insulated both with rigid foam insulation and, and rock wall in the roof spaces above so the building is much more thermally efficient than it was. In the, uh, in the sitting room we have a wood burning stove uh, and that's, that has provided us with our basic source of heating on one year when we had problems with the, with the underfloor heating uh, and it also provides a nice focal feature for that room. The other good thing about the underfloor heating is it's uh, individually uh, controlled. Each zone has its own thermostat. If, if people were to ask me would I do it all again, um, I'd say absolutely. Uh, we installed the hydro turbine uh, before the government introduced its current set of uh, incentives for renewable technologies. And as a result of that we get paid the nine pence per unit for everything that we generate. And if we were to do it again now, we'd be getting 20 pence per unit, which is the current level. Uh, and as it made sense for me at 9 pence per unit, it would obviously make a lot more sense for me at 20 pence per unit. Mm -hmm. And so when we moved in, it was, uh, was dark, rather dated, um, a bit dingy in places. And now we've got a place with tons of natural light, great views from virtually anywhere. Uh, and um, very comfortable all the year. You know, I've been happy with the output, I've been happy that we've been able to build a house that's got virtually no energy costs associated with it. When we first moved here, I calculated that with the, well, the electricity that we were using and the oil that we were burning, we were contributing something like 23 to 24 tonnes of carbon dioxide per annum to the atmosphere. Uh, now, although we do import some electricity, uh, we import on a green tariff, so uh, it's 100% green tariff, so all of that power, the electricity that we import is, uh, is carbon neutral. Uh, and of course we export our own electricity, which is also carbon neutral as well. So uh, over the course of the year, I think that we probably don't generate any carbon dioxide at all.